Hey, did you ever hear that expression, there's more than one way to skin a cat? I used to hear that all the time growing up in Arkansas, and I can't tell you if it's true or not because I never saw any skinless cats. I did see a lot of guys go to the junkyard to start an engine build. Then there was lots of machining before finishing the job. Since then, I've known guys who traded an engine core for a reman short block to build it up. Well, nowadays, of course, if you've got the cash, you can also buy a new crate engine with most of the work already done for you. Then again, if you're watching your funds, you want to work with new parts and make good power, there might be one more way to skin that cat. Sorry, PETA, we're just joking. Now let's go build a motor. Today, we're going to put together our Performance Street Small Block V8 from scratch, all with parts purchased right out of the Summit Racing catalog. And we're sure it's going to be cheaper than a crate engine. Of course, it all starts with the foundation, and Summit Racing now offers a 383 block that's machined to accept a 375 stroker crank. It's also got four bolt mains. The first 760 bucks we spent went for this block, a cast iron OE spec block with four inch diameter bores and one piece rear main seal. But first, we need to get rid of the rust inhibitor coating they use for storing and shipping. Then a good coat of WD-40 to prevent it from any new rust. With our budget and power goals in mind, the tech guys at Summit hooked us up with a 383 rotating assembly that includes the crank, set of connecting rods, aluminum pistons, flex plate, harmonic balancer, piston rings, and set of full bearings. On top of those cleavite bearings, we're dropping in this stroker crank from Eagle, which is cast steel and externally balanced. Well, next our pistons are 30 over hyper eutectics from Seal Power that made up to these I-beam connecting rods with floating pins. Now, some of you newcomers may be wondering, well, what's the difference in floating pins and press fit, and which is better? Well, that's actually two questions, but here's your answer. Press fit is pretty much what the name implies. You have to use heat to expand the small end of the rod so the pin can go in. With a floating pin, it installs rather easily and moves freely inside the connecting rod. Most aftermarket pistons have grooves to accept locks for a floating pin setup there's less friction, which is a definite advantage in high performance. Next, we can install our perfect circle rings we picked up from Molly Cleavite after we set the gaps. Now, this is a procedure that can be confusing, but it's got to be done, and in general, it's really not that difficult. The first step is to install the ring in the bore with the dot up, and square it up to find out the initial size using the feeler gauge. Now, put it into the ring filer making sure the filing direction is toward the inside of the ring. Take a little material off, reinstall it, check it, and continue till you get it right. What's right? If it's a street motor, you just multiply the bore size by .0045 for the top ring, which came up to 18 thousandths. You multiply the bore size by .0035 for the second ring, 14 thousandths in our case. And the oil ring, it should be a minimum of 15 thousandths. The final step, take an oil-soaked stone and just knock the edges off the ring opening to prevent scarring of the cylinder. So what if you're building a nitrous or blower motor? Well, we put a ring gap chart up on our website that covers just about every combination. Well, next step is to put some oil in the grooves here, install the rings, and stagger them to prevent blow-by. Now, when you hear the term blow-by, that means combustion forcing gases into the crankcase and oil, well, literally blows out the valve covers. Here's the correct way to stagger those rings. Place the oil ring spacer gap between the 90-degree arc labeled A, then position the oil ring rail gaps at the spots marked B. The lower compression ring gap gets rotated to the C position and the top compression ring gap at the D position. If you follow those simple steps for gapping and ring staggering, you're going to have a pretty nice little motor. One that has good sealed cylinders, makes good power, and last but not least, doesn't have any blow by. Now in the meantime, we have to take a break, and I'm going to go ahead and fill these cylinders. Whoa. 
Welcome back to Horsepower. Well, it all started with engine parts we ordered from a Summit Racing catalog, including our foundation, a 383 block. Our order also included an Eagle rotating assembly, and after we prepped the rings, we installed the rods with seal power pistons. The next item from our high performance wish book, the camshaft. Now ours is a performance hydraulic roller with a duration of 234 on the intake, 238 at the exhaust at 50,000 slip. Then after installing the double roller timing chain, we go bottoms up to install our oil pump and pickup. Now the pump is a high volume piece and it delivers about 20% more oil than a standard one. Next we have to install our timing cover since we're using a one piece oil pan gasket. The cool thing about this gasket from our Felpro kit is the compression stops around the bolt holes that prevent over tightening. Finally, we can close up the bottom end with a deep sump six quart street strip pan from Moroso and bolt up the oil filter adapter. Now back on top, we can drop in the hydraulic lifters. And remember here, plenty of assembly lube on the rollers and the sides of the lifters. We ordered an installation kit that includes dog bones and a steel spider to hold those lifters in place. There are lots of ways to cut corners when you're budgeting an engine build like ours, but if you want to make some serious power, don't go cheap on your cylinder heads. These aluminum performers go for about $570 a piece, and for that you get some obvious features like CNC machined 185cc intake runners for better flow, and some smaller premium features like in here, bronze valve guides that transfer heat better and resist seizing. With 64 cc combustion chambers, we expect our combination to yield about 10 to 1 compression ratio. Oh, no pension pennies on head bolts either. These are ARPs with sealant on the threads. Well, time now for the pre-measured push rods from our Summit valve train. And don't forget to put a dab of assembly lube on the tops to prevent scarring during startup. Lastly, a set of 1.5 ratio aluminum rockers. They're stud mounted, which is a popular choice in high performance builds for both strength and adjustability. With the lock nuts loosely in place, we can take out the slack in the push rods and lash the valves. The intake manifold we chose for our 383 is one of Summit Street Strip Stage 3's. Now it's a high rise dual plane design with separated runners to prevent heat soak and it's got a power range from 1500 to 6500 RPM. That open area under the plenum also keeps the fuel and air charge cooler to help make more power. On top of this Power Bond harmonic balancer, we're installing a high flow mechanical water pump, our pulley set, and finally, the V-belt. With these chrome valve covers bolted in place, we're finished out here and ready to transfer the engine to a dyno car. We're feeding our small block with the help of this Summit Street Strip 750 carb that's fitted with a manual choke and mechanical secondary. To get started, some Royal Purple break-in formula. It's holding 55 pounds. Just keep going, let it circulate for a minute. Okay. And for fire, an HEI distributor and eight millimeter spiral wound wires. She goes. We're burning 89 octane pump gas in our 383. It's got good oil pressure. And after a 20 minute braking at 2000 RPM, we're gonna dump the braking oil and get ready for the run. Going at uh, 45 first, or we'll go 55. We'll go six grand. Right away, huh? Yep. Damn. You're brave. Four hundred and sixty foot pounds of torque, four hundred horsepower. Yeah, you know, we got a little ways to go. Pretty good, especially the torque. Watch fingers. But good enough. Never. After relashing the valves and swapping two carb jets on the right bank to 78s, time for run number two. Four eighteen, four sixty-six. That's better. We're getting somewhere, but let's see what one more degree of timing gets us. Still running a little rich. I'm gonna go ahead and put another degree in it. Half 
429 with 465 foot pounds and over 400 at 25. It's not a bad little piece. You know, Galley, got to go for one more this time with 76s in all four corners. All right, final run on this thing. Here we go. Are you sure? I hope so. Four hundred and forty-three horsepower, four hundred and eighty-five foot-pounds of torque. I'm happy with that. I don't think we could really improve on that unless we put a hundred and fifty shot there on is, it. There is time to quit. <laughs> this is it. All right, man, that's awesome. We started this parts catalog motor build with a claim that we could pull it off and put out less cash than we'd pay for a comparable crate motor, which would be a ZZ three eighty-three in this case. Did we do it? That crate motor loaded with our carb, intake, distributor, and water pump would set you back about 5,800 bucks. Our complete parts tab from Summit was about 4,600. That's a saving of over $1,200. Pretty nice trade off for our labor. Meanwhile, this would be a great motor for a hot rod, street rod, even a daily driver. Well, that may be up to you because, see, we're going to give it away soon and we'll keep you posted on how to get your name in the hat. Stay with us. Say, when you were a kid, did you enjoy taking things apart just to see what was inside of them? I know I did. I used to take apart my toys, clocks, uh, my mom's toaster one time. That didn't go over too well. Well, I guess things haven't changed much. Here I am taking apart these oil filters and tell you what, while the design is basically the same, I can see the technology that goes into one is far superior. Maybe a lot like the synthetic oil that goes through it. Well, now that we got it apart, let's see how they put it together. For that, we have to travel here to a 355,000 square foot facility in Southeast Illinois. Well, when someone makes a decision to upgrade to a super premium lubricant, one of the first questions we get asked is, well, what filter should I use? And it's really that question that prompted us to do the research and bring to market a truly synthetic ultra premium filter. To develop an ultra premium filter, the element inside has to provide almost perfect particle removal while also allowing maximum flow. Most filters compromise with a synthetic cellulose blend. The Royal Purple Filter is 100% synthetic. It's primarily fiberglass with some polyester for structural support. On top of that, there's screen wire to back up that media. That is the best, longest lasting media, the best, longest lasting filter on the market. After the filter elements are pleated and cut to length, workers insert the center tubes that prevent collapse. Metal end caps with high strength adhesive provide positive seals for the filter element assemblies. Now with both ends of the filter housing complete, the units are heated to 400 degrees for curing. Meanwhile, in another part of the plant, rolls of mild steel are being used to make the extra thick shells. A magnetic conveyor belt carries the shells to a machine that cuts off the rings then they're steam cleaned, loaded onto an automatic palletizer, and moved on to an assembly area, where each one is placed upside down in a fixture and loaded with a spring. Finally, the shelves and filter elements come together with the help of this machine. The entire process is a combination of automation and handwork. These hands are installing silicone anti-drain back valves that prevent dry starts. Well, now riding on pedestals, the filters are ready for that trademark color. Spinning as the machine sprays on the purple powder coating. Then they're heat treated to 400 degrees. And while they're still hot, routed to a machine that applies the heavy duty nitrile rubber base gasket. Samples from production runs undergo a severe sequence of tests. Here it's for vibration and shock at six G's to make sure they'll stay together. In this part of the lab, they undergo 150,000 continual startups to check for fatigue. Royal Purple filters weigh 40% more than standard filters, thanks in part to a stronger steel backplate. Here, in a test of first strength, a conventional filter lets go at 260 PSI. The Royal Purple filter, still intact at 600 PSI. Perhaps the most important trial is the multi-pass test. 
where ultra-fine dust is introduced to the oil before it flows through the filter. Presently right now, it's running about 99.99% efficient at 25 micron, which is virtually 100%. It's virtually removing all of the contaminant and the dust that we are challenging it with. The Royal Purple filter is a super premium filter. It is at the very peak of all filter options that are available to the consumer today. Whether your engine powers a hot rod or a daily driver, when you spin one of these filters onto it, it's gonna have the same high quality as the synthetic oil that runs through it. Air tools are essential for fast, efficient work in your home shop. But don't you hate dragging around a compressor with a bunch of tangled hoses? Well, Rapid Air Products has a new economical 100-foot master kit made with you in mind. Now, it comes with this durable, lightweight nylon tubing, compressor manifold kit, and two air outlet kits. Now, it's easy to install. The hose is attached to the fittings in a breeze, and you can get all types of accessories to customize the master kit to make your system at home neat, clean, and efficient. Now, the master kit will set you back about 140 bucks. Not a bad price for air anywhere. You can run, but you can't hide from it. Rust, that is. It's one of your ride's worst enemies. Well, now an industrial technology developed in 1986 to prevent extreme rust in salt mining equipment is available for cars and trucks too. It's called Counteract, and it's a patented electrostatic technology with a module that connects to your battery. It sends minute electrical charges through these two couplers that deploy a very slight negative charge to the body surfaces of the vehicle. That charge prevents and inhibits rust and corrosion protecting body panels, paint, even bolt-on accessories made from dissimilar metals. Basically, the counteract system eliminates the tendency of oxygen and iron to result in rust. These things are ideal for everything from daily drivers to show cars, and they come with a guarantee that's good even if you swap it from one vehicle to another, with prices starting at just under 300 bucks. Well, hope you stay dry and rust-free until next week. We'll see you then.